Welcome chess friends. Today we're going to look at the position from Think Like a Super GM by Michael Adams and Philip Hurtado. White is the move and the question is how can white stop the black pawns from promotion? And in the book there are players of different level who give their opinion about this position. So the critical lines and the evaluation and at the end of those lines. So let's start with the three candidate moves that are being mentioned in the book. The first one is from George, rated 1673. And he says, I would play rook g3. After a4, rook h3, I wait. And if the pawn advances any further, I I uh, protect the square a2 and after rook king b3 I force the king back with rook h3 and it is a draw. <coughs> That's the first line. Then we have Taram rated 1912 and after 21 minutes they come up with king d5 and after a4 king c6 a3 rook takes b5 and they conclude that this position is a draw. Finally we have Nathan and Nathan says I would play rook g1 and I expect the game to continue with a4, rook b1 check, king a5, king c5, a3, rook takes b5, King a4, king takes c4, a2 with a draw. So this is the line by Nathan and after 10 minutes he came up with the evaluation that this position is a draw. So let's go back and so we have three candidate moves, rook g3, king d5 and rook g1. And I was kind of surprised because if I would get this position, I think I would spend 80% of my time on the move rook g1. And why would that be the case? Because rook, GN, uh, rook g1 creates a checking distance, right? Because we don't want the pawns or the king to attack the rook and the rook on b1 is at a safe distance and it cooperates well with the white king because the two kings are opposing at the moment and it forces the black king to go to either a3 or a5 after black has played the move a4. So for me, uh, when I look at this position, it is um, very tempting to concentrate on rook g1 and then by black I would expect them to advance their a pawn um, because the c pawn restricts the white king and the a pawn is the furthest away from the white king. Um, and also after um, rook b1, right, if the king goes to a3 it blocks the pawn on a4 if the king goes to a5, then the support of the black king of the promotion of the a pawn has become much weaker. Um, so I was surprised actually that um, other players would come up with a move like rook g3 and uh, uh, king d5 because both seem very slow to me. Um, now the question of course is, is it a draw or is it winning for white? And so um, let's look once more. I'm going to mention the moves. So you have to visualize them. Rook g1, a4, rook b1. Check, king a5, king c5, a3, rook takes b5, king a4. King takes c4, a2 with a draw. And in the book by Kuyasevich, um, he has a chapter in which you have to find the hidden tactic. So there is a winning 
move in that line from Nathan that he missed. Um, can you find that move? So rook g1, a4, rook b1 check, king a5, king c5, a3, rook takes b5, king a4, king takes c4, a2. And the position at the end is a draw, right? Because if white would play there, uh, rook b8, black plays king a3, and after king c3, black would promote with check. So that's not an opportunity. So the winning move has to be found earlier in the variation. So let me show you the moves on the board. Rook g1, a4, rook b1 check, king a5, king c5, a3. All very logical, and this is of course what you could expect. Rook takes b5, king a4, king takes c4 and a2 with a draw. And what did Nathan miss? Nathan missed a theme, an additional theme. So we have checking distance, right? That was one theme. And then um, the second theme was basically, of course, forcing the black king to, um, to a bad square, either a3 or a5. But the third theme is that we can um, we can use checkmate ideas to win the game. So after rook takes b5, we can here play rook b4, right, forcing the king back, and now we have an easy win because we threaten to play rook a8 checkmate, so a2 is not possible, and after king c4, king a4, king c4, we renew the mating threat and white is winning. So there was a, an additional theme in the, in the puzzle that Nathan did not pick up, and which was crucial in finding the win. And that is by creating a mating threat and realizing how bad the position of the black king is. And that leads to a, a winning endgame. So for me, when I looked at this position, I would have spent 80% on making rook g1 work. I would not have seriously considered so much king d5 and rook g3. I would have verified, of course, if they had any promise. Um, and it, it comes from knowing those concepts like checking distance and, of course, the opposing king and forcing the king to, uh, to um, a, a bad square. Surprisingly, there is another winning move in the starting position besides rook g1. So there were nine people who solved this puzzle, including Michael Adams, and all nine missed the alternative winning move, which is very surprising. So, and which is the move king e3. So let's see what happens, right? If black continues with their normal plan, King a4, rook c5, king b4, rook c8, king a4, king c3. And now, again, um, this checkmate idea, right? After b4, king takes c4, wins the game. And uh, let's look at the alternatives. King e3, king c3, right, to shield off the white king from approaching. Now, of course, 
we see that it was crucial that the rook was on the fifth rank. So we immediately pick up a pawn. We threaten to win the A pawn. The king goes back. But now black is running out of moves. And white can just wait until uh, they can collect the pawns. And finally, right, so after king e3, there's also a c3. Of course, now the king can approach a4, king c2, a3, and rook g4, and the black pawns are immediately lost. So for me, uh, when I go back to the original position, based on the concepts that you know from um, rook endgames in general, checking distance and the opposing kings, um, I would have tried to make rook b1 work. There was one additional idea in the position, and that was using mating threats to, uh, to, to basically win the black pawn. And it was surprising that we found a completely alternative solution with king e3, which was not considered because it feels like uh, it feels also really slow to walk with the king uh, in uh, in an alternative direction, and um, it feels like the king can perhaps be shielded off. But it's critical that the rook is on the fifth rank, so after king c3, um, black immediately loses their b pawn. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this short video and um, I just wanted to highlight how important it is to know some mini concepts in rook endings to find the right candidate moves. Thank you for your attention.